Hello there, you are welcome to His Gulf TV and my name is Colin Nanaya Abebrese. Now, in this uh, video, I have put together a very short uh, documentary about the uh, founding of the first political party in the Gold Coast, now um, Ghana, which I'll share with you very shortly. But before I share with you that video, I want to give you a brief uh, background to the formation of the UGCC and then we can watch the video. Now, the UGCC or the United Gold Coast Convention was the first political party uh, formed in the Gold Coast and it was formed on the 4th of August 1947. Okay, now this, um, this nationalist movement, uh, as we may call it, or as our historians may call it, is different or was different uh, from the other nationalist movement that were formed uh, before the First uh, World War, especially the Aborigines Rights Protection Society uh, and the youth uh, movement, which were being formed at that time, before the First uh, World War. Now, um, the UGCC aimed at uniting or bringing together all Ghanaians to fight against colonial rule, unlike the Aborigines Rights Protection Society, uh, for which was uh, concerned with the land bill uh, issue and, and once the land bill was abolished, you know, the whole society ceased to exist. The UGCC was not like that. It was formed to bring together everybody on board. And that is how different uh, the UGCC is to uh, that of the other youth uh, movement or nationalist movement uh, formed before the first uh, world war. Now, um, this party was made up of, you know, lawyers and big time businessmen in the um, society. And so we watched the video on the founding of the UGCC. And then when we come back, we can react to any of them, many of the issues are raised in there. And then we can do that. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and let's watch the video. The grievances and frustrations of Ghanaians after the Second World War led to the creation of a new political party, the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC, which became the first political party in the country. It brought all Ghanaians together against colonial rule. The UGCC was different from the Aborigines Rights Protection Society and the youth movement. The UGCC was formed at Salt Pond on 4 August 1947. The leading members were senior lawyers, highly educated persons and big businessmen in the Gold Coast. The top officials were George Alfred Grant, Chairman Dr. J.B. Dankwa Iris Blay, Vice Chairman E.A.W. Ofori Atta Edward Ekufu Ado J.W. Dikrab Johnson Obechebi Lamte, Ako Ejei, R.A. Awuno Williams, a treasurer, Kobna Kese, John W. Tibo.
needed. Why was the UGCC formed in the Gold Coast? 1. The UGCC was formed because the 1946 constitution gave only 5 seats to the educated nationalists while the chiefs were given 13 seats. The educated elite felt that they had been cheated, since they were more qualified to take over the administration from the British. 2. The UGCC was formed because the businessmen were not happy with the restrictions on trade by the colonial government. They were also against the behavior of European and Asian firms had monopolized trade in the country. Timber and mining concessions were granted to whites against Ghanaians. 3. The UGCC was formed because of discrimination against Ghanaians in the civil service. While Europeans received top appointments, Ghanaians with the same or better qualifications were rejected. They only served as messengers, laborers, cleaners and critical assistants. 4. The UGCC was formed because of the plight of the ex-service men who fought alongside with the British counterparts on the battlefields. On their return to the Gold Coast, they expected the British colonial authorities to resettle them like their European counterparts in Britain. The ex-servicemen were not happy that promises the British government made to them such as good pension, houses, employment and seats on the Legislative Council before they went to the war were not honored. As a result, most of them became jobless for which reason they requested the colonial government to give them grants so that life could be better for them. What were the aims of the UGCC? 1. The party's aim was to ensure that by all legitimate and constitutional means the direction and control of government should pass into the hands of the people and their chiefs in the shortest possible time. 2. To ensure that persons elected to represent the people and their natural rulers, thus, traditional leaders on the legislative council be elected by reason of their competence and not otherwise. 3. To protest against the 1946 Burns Constitution which gave limited number of seats to the educated elite. 4. To serve as a political platform for Africans to express their grievance. The UGCC remained conservative and moderate and was supported mainly by the chiefs and elders, the professional people and the discontented private businessmen. The party soon began to spread, and the need arose for a full-time secretary to look after its affairs. Kwame Nkrumah, who had been outside the country for 12 years and was then in London, was invited to become Secretary General upon the recommendation of Akko Ajay. Nkrumah returned to the Gold Coast in December 1947 to take up the secretary position of the UGCC. Then Akko Ajay said he had a friend at, in London. And father said, write to him and ask him if he would like to come. And then Akwaje wrote to uh, uh, Kwame Nkrumah and within a month a letter came to say that he would like to come. So father sent, gave uh, Akwaje 100 pounds to send to him to come. As soon as he got the money, he came. And uh, father sent his car to pick him at the harbor from Takwari Harbor. And he came and stayed in our house for some time. This event was an important turning point in the history of the UGCC and the country. It boosted the party and provided a focal point for radical political organization. Nkrumah had certain qualities and abilities which enabled him to captivate the people. He had read extensively and knew the nature and effect of colonialism on colonial peoples. He was convinced that independence could be won only by organizing the masses and the youth. He had always lived a simple life, unlike most of the UGCC leaders. Because of these qualities, Nkrumah was able to talk to ordinary people all over the country, endure the long and tedious traveling schedule, the bad food and uncomfortable sleeping conditions which his work involved. The young people who had been estranged from the highly educated leaders, were looking for a new type of leadership, which Nkrumah was in a position to provide. Nkrumah began to organize rallies and address the people throughout the country. His oratory drew huge crowds to the rallies. 
Soon Nkrumah extended the activities of the UGCC beyond the colony, where it had been centered before his arrival, to the Asante and the Northern Territories. What were the achievements of the UGCC? 1. The party became so popular that by 1948 about 209 branches had been opened throughout the country. This helped to raise national awareness and help the people to understand the colonial situation and how everybody was to contribute to the attainment of independence. 2. The party was able to bring the educated elite both in the diaspora and on the continent together to step up the struggle to end colonialism. 3. The UGCC became a platform where the grievances of the Africans were articulated. 4. The leadership of the party was able to take advantage of the 1948 riots to accelerate independence process. 5. It established a newspaper called, The Talking Drums for Political Education of the People. Subsequently, a general election based on the 1951 constitution was held on February 8, 1951. The voting age for the election was reduced from 25 to 21 as recommended by the Kusi Committee. The following political parties took part in the elections, the Convention People's Party, CPP, the National Democratic Party, NDP, the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC, the People's Democratic Party, PDP. After the election, the CPP won 34 out of the 38 seats. The UGCC only won three seats and one seat for an independence candidate. The leader of the CPP, Kwame Nkrumah by the time of the election was serving a prison term for declaring a positive action on 9 January 1950, because the government was not prepared to give in to the wishes of the majority of the people. Nkrumah led his followers to stage a sit-down strike. Throughout the country the people refused to go to work. This was described as the positive action. By so doing they hoped to force the government into granting the country complete independence. Kwame Nkrumah was released from James Fort Prison, Accra. He was appointed the leader of government business of a new executive council made up of six CPP parliamentarians, two members from the Asante and Northern Territories. These eight Ghanaians were joined by three British officials from the Legislative Assembly. From 1952, Nkrumah was made the Prime Minister, now becoming more powerful and assertive. Following the adoption of a new constitution on 29 April 1954, there ought to be a new election to reflect the provisions in the new constitution. This election was held on 15 June 1954. It is important to stress that the 1954 general election was the second to be held in the Gold Coast. It gave the country its first all-African assembly. After the election, the UGCC which had changed its name to Ghana Congress Party led by Dr. J.B. Danqua won one out of 104 seats while the CPP led by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah won 71 seats. Kwame Nkrumah, do solemnly swear that I will well and truly exercise the functions of the high office of President of Ghana. So help me God. What were the failures of the UGCC? 1. The UGCC failed to win self-government for the people through legal and constitutional means. 2. The party was not organized as a mass political party. It concentrated its efforts within the educated elite and also branches were opened mainly in cities and towns neglecting the rural folks. Moreover, the UGCC was in disagreement with Kwame Nkrumah over strategy, ideology and the timing of independence. This development led to the resignation of Kwame Nkrumah, its energetic secretary, to form his own party. This affected the UGCC's organization and support base.
time. And he schooled them that when they saw Dankwa, they should insult him. So one day, they had meet, a meeting at Father's room. And suddenly they heard a lot of noise. So Father went to the window to see what was happening. And as soon as they saw Father, they stopped the noise. Then when Father left the window, they started again. So Dankwa got up and also went to the window. How they insulted him. They had a song that they sang. She sang it. Down kwa kwa men kurma ya wodan Down kwa kwa men kurma ya wodan Nyamwa nwa kran mo fia bwe tribe ya Down kwe kwa bia ya wodan Nyamwa nwa kran mo fia bwe tribe ya Down kwe kwa bia ya wodan that's the song they used, they sang that day. And they started hooting at the people who were having a meeting at Father's uh, uh, office. Four, the absence of Nkrumah also crippled the organizational ability of the UGCC. Nkrumah was seen as the driving force in enlisting the support of the masses to the cause of the UGCC. The party therefore came back to lack a broader support base. So now, we've watched the video and I hope uh, you enjoyed um, the video. You can share your comments on any of the issues uh, raised there. If there is any other additional information, about the UGCC that you want to share, you can also share that with us. But you see, this uh, organize this uh, for political party today. We could celebrate 4th August as uh, of course Founders Day, for that is S apostrophe, and this was changed by the current uh, government, Nana Arudanko Ekufuado. And it was changed from Nkrumah's birthday, uh, that was 21st of September to 4th August. And the argument is that um, it wasn't only Nkrumah who fought for independence for um, Ghana, and therefore we shouldn't have uh, founders with apostrophe X, but we should have um, founders with S apostrophe. Now, which I believe on, or I mean, which I myself I agreed to, that it, it wasn't only Nkrumah who you know fought for independence. Actually, when Nkrumah came, uh, you know everything had been done. You know, uh, independence was almost there. He just came to ride on for what the other nationalists had done. So I agree with the with the government if the name is to change from. Apostrophe S to S apostrophe for Founders Day is good. However, my problem with the um, government was that why then did they change the date from Increment birthday on the 21st of September to 4th August on the day that the UGCC was formed? Let's also not forget that the current government, their forefathers, is the UGCC. You understand? the new patriotic party came from the UGCC. They had constantly changed um, their name from the UGCC to the Progress Party, you know, and on and on and on and on. So let's not lose sight of the fact that the founders that you heard in the video are the correlatives of the current party, you know, the government. So 
My problem was changing the name, uh, the date of the Founders Day from Increment Dev Day to the formation of the UGCC. That is what I felt was problematic and, and, and that is what made a lot of people feel that the president was being, uh, you know, political. It was a political move, you know, uh, because yes, there is no uh, wrong in celebrating everybody. But then if you don't even want it to be on Nkrumah's birthday, why should it be on your forefathers' parties, you know, uh, birthday? I think it, it, I mean, it could have been on any day, any day aside, let's say, Nkrumah's birthday or the day that the UGCC was formed. But instead, they chose to celebrate the founding day on 4th August, which to me is something that I, that is the problem I have. I don't know about you. But let's hear your view in the comment section. Let's see how you are enjoying the video and educating yourself. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.